All right. All right, guys, welcome to this week's uh, You Media Miami virtual podcast, uh, which is also presented with the Miami Day Public Library System. Today, we have a special guest. We have our friend, our local guitarist, songwriter, music arranger, and I would just say the guy with the, the coolest beard in this call. <laughs> we have Jonathan. <laughs> He's, um, he's going to be with us for this podcast as we ask some questions, just get to know him a little bit better. Um, and before we do, why don't we just go around and everyone introduce themselves um, so that we know who's here. Oh, I'll start. Um, so uh, <laughs> I'm Shamir. Um, I'm one of the instructors located in the North Regional Library. Um, and yeah. <laughs> I'm Rachel. I'm um, the instructor from South um, at Media. I've been part of Media for two years, about. Great to be here. Awesome. You saved the best for last. <laughs> uh, so I'm Jonathan. I'm um, a local guitarist, songwriter. I also arrange music. I play at several different churches and I record whenever you know, producers call me. I've been playing guitar for 12 years. Is that good enough? <laughs> Maybe. That's yeah. awesome. Maybe. <laughs> That's a boast. <laughs> so I think everyone here in this call, you know, whether you know they're a musician or not, we we all have love for for music, um, all types of music genres. Um, but you know, before we maybe like start asking questions, you know, why don't you just share a little bit about yourself, Jonathan, just so that we can, you know, just see, you know, your history and like, you know, you mentioned you've been playing guitars for 12 years. So why don't you just like break that down a little bit for us? Sure. <clears throat> so I come from a family of musicians. My dad is a guitar player. My brother's a drummer. Uh, ever since I was young, you know, uh, I'd go to church and watch them go ahead and be a part of the practice. So I was always exposed to music my whole life. I remember even as a kid, my dad would put music on, you know, from church back home or wherever we'd go. And I was also, I was always interested in like the cool music, but I would listen to the background stuff. So I'd listen to the singers do their harmonies and I was always interested in like, oh, those details, you know. Of course, being five, six years old, you don't really know what they're called you're just like hey that sounds cool so whenever i'd have to sing at church i'd sing those harmonies and everyone would kind of look at me like oh what's he doing you know so then around uh eight years old my dad really wanted me to play piano so my first instrument was actually piano and a, he would kind of force me to practice i didn't want to do piano i knew i wanted to do music and at eight you know nine years old i wanted to be a rapper so <laughs> that didn't work <laughs> I, I would even like convince my dad to um, go on stage at church and I'd wear a UM jersey and a UM hat and I'd like fake a gold chain and I'd rap for everybody. And by rap, I'd be like, I'd lip sync to music that was playing. So that was, that was my early career. That was how I got all that started. <laughs> <laughs> but then from there, um, I, you know, I really, I told my dad I didn't want to do piano, I wanted to do something cooler. I, I wanted to learn an instrument. And he was like, well, you got to figure it out because, you, you know, you're going to do something. You're not just going to stay home and, you know, play video games. And I was like, all right, cool. So at that moment, we went to another church because uh, it was like their anniversary and they invited my dad uh, to, to be a part of the service. And I saw one of my friends, a really close friend of mine, he, he was playing guitar. And I just see that he's really into it. He's like headbanging and everything. And I was like, that, <laughs> I want to do that. So from there, I told my dad, I want to play guitar. And he was like, all right, but you gotta, he grabbed me. He was like, grab my hands and you gotta promise me that you're gonna learn how to play guitar. And I was like, dad, I promise I, I'm gonna do this. So I was 12 and I got my first guitar. I started practicing, but you know, you're not the most disciplined when you're 12 years old. So you, what I would do is I'd practice for about 15 minutes and then get bored and go play and stuff like that. And you know what? I got lucky because the guy that was teaching me guitar was very impatient and he was, he was about to call it quits on me. He was like, I'm not going to teach you any more guitar. And I remember one day he told me, I'm not going to teach you anymore. Wow. But then the next day he called me back and he was like, listen, I know you're just a kid, 
but you gotta, you gotta, you know, put in a little more effort. And I was like, okay, I will. So he decided that it was okay for me to go and play as long as I gave him 20 solid minutes of practice time every single day. So that's what I did. I practiced 20 solid minutes, the most focused and the most like, you know, like as hard as I could practice, I would, you know, as determined as I was. So from there, I really saw and I noticed how my guitar playing, you know, uh, changed from something that was really sloppy to something that was a little more focused. And so I, I, I was about 13 at the time. I had been playing guitar for a year. And I remember I had just joined the, the uh, church worship band. And I was like, okay, this is cool. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm starting to be a part of this. I'm making music. I remember coming back home one day and me and my brother were taking equipment out of the car and I opened the trunk and I look at my guitar and I was like, I, I'm playing this thing. This is amazing. It like hit me like an epiphany. And then I was like, I, I have to do this for the rest of my life. And you know, you tell your dad that you want to be a musician or you tell your parents that you want to be a musician and that's how you want to make money. They don't, they don't take it very well. You know, my dad wanted me to be um, an accountant because I was really, I was, I'm pretty good at math. My mom just wanted me to be happy. You know, she supports me no matter what I do. When you tell people around you that you want to be a musician and that's what you want to do with your life, they, <laughs> they kind of laugh at you. They're like, what are you going to do? Join a band? And I'm like, yeah, why not? But they're like, mm -hmm. you, it's not going to work out. But I asked my worship leader, I was like, should I do music for the rest of my life? And he was kind of caught in, uh, in this wall where he's telling me, well, you know, he's telling a kid what he should do with his life. And he was like, you know what? Do what you want to do, but do it well. And that stuck. I was like, all right, it's cool. I can do this. So from there, I go on to uh, join this music school called Cancion. Which, uh, which is a Spanish music school that focused on music theory and ensemble. So, you, you know, they put you in a band and you're, you're learning how to play. Plus, they give you a lesson, kind of like a general lesson, one teacher with maybe five, six students at a time. And I met my first guitar teacher, my first official guitar teacher. His name is Alejandro Briseño. Uh, and that man is the scariest dude in the world. <laughs> he was the most military... <laughs> If you guys have seen the movie Whiplash, she was kind of like that. Not as mean, oh, didn't feel wow. happy. but yeah, he was, he's intimidating. Uh, he would write these crazy progressions on the wall. He would teach us theory and then he'd write these things on the wall and go, all right, what key is that in? Me being 13 years old, I'm like shaking. I'm, I just learned this stuff. I don't even remember. And he would just stand there and he's really intimidating. He built and he was also bald. So he had this stare with a really big beard, so I think that's where I got inspired from. But <laughs> I, would, I would just, you know, stay there and shake. But I, I took his classes for two years, and I remember walking out of there like, wow, I learned so much. But even I didn't understand and comprehend everything that I had learned. From there, I joined my uh, high school jazz band. And I remember walking in and listening to the jazz band for the first time going, I am not good enough to, you know, telling myself I'm not good enough to... Um, to be a part of this, this is too much for me. But I went back home and I kind of felt a little bit defeated and my brother encouraged me. He was like, you know what, you can do it. I'll help you with this first song and then you'll see, you'll be able to do it. So it was uh, the Rocky song, they're gonna fly now, da 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 you know, ba ba ba. Uh -huh. And I had to play guitar on that. And I got lucky because at church we had just done a similar guitar rhythm and it was a little bit mm -hmm. funky. And so I was like, I can do this. I, it hit me again. I was like, oh my God, I can do this. So I grabbed my guitar, I grabbed my amplifier, and I grabbed a, a pedal called a wall pedal, which is like a funky, like, you know, kind of like shaft. He's walking down the street. He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I can do this. So I take that to the jazz band. I'm playing the Rocky song like that. And I just remember the conductor. He's like, you know, telling everybody, cueing everybody. He's just looking at me like, what is that kid? <laughs> <laughs> so and everybody had they had never i guess nobody had ever seen that kind of energy come out of a, a jazz guitarist mm. so i you know i play that first song and then they they are they're all kind of looking at me like oh so what's your name again and you know then i get properly introduced to the rest of the jazz band and uh 
those jazz band years were really cool. They were, I learned a lot too. Uh, from there, I, I got recruited into the jazz combo, which is kind of like the best students in a small, like five piece band. And that, that was tough too. That was another intimidating bald guy that was directing that. And he actually threw stuff at us, but don't tell anybody. Uh, oh, he threw markers, he threw markers, markers. <laughs> <laughs> but if we want to learn our music, he'd get mad. And he'd be like, what? And then he'd throw a marker, you know, not a chair. But uh, he, you know, th those were his bad days when we pissed him off. On good days, he'd, you know, make jokes and make us laugh and stuff. So those, those years were fun because I would go out and have to, uh, I'd go out and, and play at different schools or at different venues. I remember one time we even played for a PBS and we played Pure Imagination by, um, from the, the, the Charlie and the, no, sorry, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Mm -hmm. And it was, I just remember, you know, standing there in front of hundreds of people playing Pure Imagination. And I was like, this is, this is the feeling that I've been looking for, you know? Mm -hmm. So after that, I, uh, I take a semester off between high school and college after I graduate high school because I really want to make sure that what I'm, that I want to do, you know, what I want to do is music. And emotionally, I wasn't in the best place either. So I was just kind of like, I took some time off to, to recollect my thoughts and then to just pray and, you know, to make sure that what I, that next step was going to be the right step. And um, so I decided to go to Miami Dade College. I take a sound recording class because I'll, I just want to see if, okay, is music really going to be my thing? And so I take that sound recording class and I start to make friends again and stuff. And I'm like, okay, this is fun. Then I go to, I start my second semester and that's when I meet other friends. Uh, me and Vinny have a friend in common, his name is German. And that's when I met him and we started talking about, you know, uh, you know making music together. And I, that was really inspiring at the time. And then he starts to introduce me to all of his friends. And the other person was Vinny. So I meet Vinny at a McDonald's on Valentine's Day, and I thought that was a <laughs> But it didn't mean anything. It didn't end up working out. So, um, and we just start, you know, introducing ourselves, and I just see that there's other people with the same passion as me. They want to make music the same way that I want to make music. And I thought that was really inspiring. So I was like, I can do this. So I continue, you know, we're, we're trying to make music. Unfortunately, that band didn't, didn't really work out, but I didn't let that stop me. Um, so I, I joined the, the jazz band at Miami Dade, I joined some R&B bands, uh, and we actually started gigging around Miami. We start, um, I, I got put in charge of this club, and I became the president of the club called uh, the Vocal Fusion Club at Miami Dade Campus. And what I had to do was set up shows every single Wednesday uh, for like an hour show, you know, it was pretty much a concert. And I'd have to choose the bands, I'd have to choose the singers. I, I, that was all my responsibility. And a lot of that responsibility, well, it's, it can be intimidating. It's hard. <laughs> the, most of these kids don't want to practice and stuff like that. But then you have a lot of kids that do want to practice and they want to try their best. So, you know, those are the people that you tend to, to, to use. And it's just amazing that feeling of, you know what, you want to make music and I want to make music and you're taking it to the next level just like I am. So that like vibe, I guess, is just really, really cool. And that keeps inspiring you. But then I hit a wall around 20, early 2018. And I'd walk into my classes and I'd see that um, these kids were better than me, beyond me. I couldn't comprehend the level that they were playing. I was struggling with my theory classes, music theory. And I, I just, you know, I had been good at theory my whole life, but this was a whole new level. And it was like Chinese to me. Uh, I, I started to lose friends here and there and I, I fell into this depression and I was like, you know what? I, I can't do music anymore. I just, I can't. And I was about to quit. Uh, so I actually, at that moment, I tweeted something like, I should just, oh, I should have worn the shirt today. I should just quit guitar. And one of my friends saw that tweet and then she encouraged me not to you know, give up. And then she turned it into a shirt. So I have that shirt at my house somewhere. And, uh, but at that moment when I tweeted it, I was so ready to give up on music. I, I did not feel good, you know? And then, you know, just 
another moment of depression and, and, and trying to search for the right thing. You know, people came and they were like, you know what, you're better than what you think you are. You're, you're, you're so much more attentive. You're, you're, you're easy. You know, you're like one of the best people to be around, but you know, above everything, you're really good at music. And I had professors tell me that, I had friends tell me that. So that kind of got me, you know, to, to keep going on music. And then after that, exactly one year later, I'm gigging around Miami with a friend of ours. Her name is Paige, P-A-I-I-G-E. And she's like a local artist here in Miami. And we impressed the right people. And they, they invite us to go play at this place called the uh, Gibson Showroom. And um, that's Gibson is one of the two big guitar companies. There's Fender and there's Gibson. And I've always wanted a Gibson guitar. My first, like, I wanted my first guitar to be a Gibson guitar, but they're, they're pretty expensive. So I, at that moment, I had just bought a new guitar, a Fender guitar, and I was like, oh, they're not going to let me use my new guitar. So I, I walk into the Gibson showroom, and they tell us something like, hey, there's a band that's doing soundcheck, and you guys aren't going to be able to do it. And I was like, okay, fine. And uh, the guy's like, so who's the guitarist? And I raise my hand, and he goes, okay, what guitar do you want? So he takes me into this room full of guitars, wall-to-wall -wall full of guitars. And I'm just standing there like, oh, my God, this is beautiful. And he goes, no, nah, that's not, that's not, let's, let's go to another room. So he sticks me in an elevator, and we're going up an elevator. And I was like, listen, any Les Paul would do, but if you have a Honey Burst Les Paul, that's like my dream Les Paul. And he's like, I have that in my office. So he tells me to wait somewhere. He goes into his office. He brings it out and he puts it in my hand. And I just remember feeling that guitar like, oh my goodness. This is like, it was a perfect match. I had never vibed with a guitar as hard as I did in that moment. And at that moment, you know, Paige was standing there. Our friend, Daniel Yakuman, who's, who's in my current band, he's standing there. And our friend, Taylor. And they're all looking at me and they're like, that guitar fits you perfectly. Like, it's made for you. And I just... I stood there in awe like this this guitar feels amazing i can't even imagine how it sounds and then they're like hey the band that's supposed to have soundtrack didn't make it so you guys are on so we're like oh boy all right cool so i stand up there i connect my you know the guitar to a pedal board and to an amplifier and i strum and it sounds amazing like everybody there in that room starts to look at me and they're like whoa that sounds good <laughs> and so I get excited and I'm like, hey, let's play. It's, it's probably me, which is like an old Sting song, but we turned it into like rock and roll. We turned it super upbeat. And we play the song and the Gibson executive is, is staring at us. He's like, that was amazing. So that night, you know, we, we performed there. We performed with 10 other bands. And essentially we're, we were competing uh, for a, a spot to play at the Revolution Live. Uh, we lost, we didn't even get close to winning. But at the end, like every time a band would go play, I'd go watch the band for maybe one or two songs and then I'd go back, you know, to the back and pick up the guitar again because I was like, I'm never going to see this guitar for the rest of my life. I have to take advantage now. And so the Gibson executive just kind of comes by and he sees me playing the guitar. He's like, you just can't put it down. I was like, I, I have no choice. Like I have to spend time with it now. So at the end of the show, you know, he's coming around p collecting the guitars from everybody that used one uh, that night. And he grabs the guitar from me, but he also has the case. And he puts it back in the case in front of me. And then the bass player tells him, hey, you're going to make him cry. And he's like, well, I'm going to make him cry for a different reason. And then he pulls out a piece of paper and he hands it to me and I open it and it's a contract. And then wow. he's like, step into my office. So I, I go into his office and luckily that night, my sister and my brother-in-law were there and my brother-in-law's a lawyer. So I start reading this contract and I'm like, hold on. So I take it to my brother-in-law. He reads it. He's like, sign it, sign it now. So I go back into the office. I sign it. And I got endorsed by Gibson that day, December 15th, 20, um, 2018. Wow. That was like me. I, I, that guitar was worth more money than my car at the moment. My car did not have air conditioning, the windows weren't working, and I had to stick that beautiful, expensive guitar into that car. <laughs> and I was like, this isn't even worth it, should I like, run home? So I get home and I, I walk into you know, my parents' room and they're like, what's going on? And I show them the guitar, they're like, what is going on? And then I tell them everything that happened. 
And my dad was like, okay, like do what you need to do. So, you know, part of that contract is I, I have to upload a lot of videos and pictures or and stuff with the guitar and anything that I do on media with it, like if it's on TV or on YouTube or whatever, I have to, you know, send them that information. But I, I quickly found out that companies, big companies like these are kind of like the Illuminati. They know before you know. <laughs> So they, they, they're watching me like every step of the way. And I'm not, I'm not scared because I love it. Uh, and I've been playing with it this whole time. So that opens a lot of doors for me immediately. I have, you know, other people that find out about me and now they want to work with me, especially since I'm the only local young man that is sponsored by Gibson in Miami, you know? And so uh, these, uh, this studio called Where You At Studios calls me and they're like, hey, we heard about you. Come down, We're gonna, you're gonna record for us. I'm like, yes, yes, sir. So I'm going down and I'm like asking, okay, what is the song? And they're like, we can't tell you who, it's, who it is, but just know it's like a big time artist. So I was like, all right, cool. So I'm recording and I've recorded several songs there and I never find out who the artist is, mostly because I don't listen to pop radio. <laughs> but, People probably hear me and then they're, they're, I don't even know if it's me sometimes, you know? Um, so that started happening. And then like, there was some times when I needed a, a new piece of, of, you know, like a pedal or something guitar related. And I'll call um, local or Sweetwater, which is a, a guitar, I mean, yeah, like a music store online. And they've already had me profile. Like I asked for a pedal and they're like, wait, are you blank? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. And they're like, all right. We'll send it out to you right now, half price. And I'm like, all right, great, you know? So that started opening doors for me. And uh, I was able to go to this conference uh, called NAM in California, which is a big music thing. And you can only really be invited to it. And I, I got to go because of that too, you know? So all these doors started opening. I started my own projects that I recorded with the church and recording with several artists. Most of the time, the artists aren't in the room with you. So you don't know who you're recording for. You're just like, you just... You know, show up, you set up, you play, they pay you and you leave because time is money. So yeah. the more they can get done in the day, the less they have to, you know, they have to pay for the, the space. So, you know, even now uh, between in the last couple of days, I've been talking to this other company called Marshall, which is this uh, amplifier uh, company. And they're one of the best companies, you know, I, I don't have any Marshall amplifiers, but I met them out at NAM. And they gave me an email to, to you know, to uh, see if I can set up like a, another artist endorsement with them. So I'm currently in the talks with them and hopefully everything will, will fall through for, for that too. So, so far, that's my story. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. Your life sounds like a movie. <laughs> like, uh, it, <laughs> it's it so feels like a movie a lot of the time. And like sometimes things happen and I'm just like, how is this even happening to me right now? You know, it's, it's, it's fun. I can't complain. <laughs> yeah. And that, and it's crazy. Like how, how old are you, Jonathan? 24. 24. Look wow. at that. So wow. at, at 24, you know, at, at this point of your career sponsored by Gibson, you know, you know, just a little like um, insight, you know, at, at our spaces at the library, you media, you know, we do teach, you know, workshops related to, to music. And the majority of the teens that are interested in that sort of like, you know, the field want to be either a rapper, you know, like you shared, or some sort of producer, okay? And, you know, as instructors, we try our best to, you know, teach them, you know, the mechanics behind, you know, our software, whether it's Logic or GarageBand, um, you know, and first of all, also like setting them up in whatever it is that they're trying to do musically, whether it's like as a singer, or as a, like a rapper, or producer. Um, and I can also like, I, I believe like all of us here, like speaking for Shamir and Rachel, like we all, you know, do play some sort of instrument, you know? Um, and we tell the kids, you know, the teens like, don't, don't, don't be so like one dimensional, like don't just be a rapper, right? Let's say you want to be a rapper, cool. But we, we look, we show them guys like, you know, Post Malone, Post Malone, yeah. you know, he's, he's great and all, but you also see that a lot of times he has a set where he can just bring a guitar and he'll sing along to it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Or, you know, other, other artists nowadays, like that they, they, they try to incorporate other things to their music. 
Um, right. So I think for like the question I would probably ask, like, you know, let's say you get endorsed by um, whatever brand it is, or you're setting up your career, you know, like once you like, once you get there, I think that, I think that's obviously the first step, but for you, you know, now that you're in this position, you know, like what, how is it, how does this help you reach your and achieve your goals as a, you know, as a songwriter or a guitarist, like what is now the next thing for you now that you're at this position of your career? Okay. That's a good question. Now, what I, what I want to clarify is, yeah, the endorsements are cool. You know, like that, that, that guitar that they gave me, it's a very expensive guitar and it's really nice. And pieces like that i like to, to kind of hold up like a trophy like i earned this you know you got to work for it but when it comes to writing or the next step of the race those things do help you a little bit but it's more about the effort that you put in yourself so for example right now i'm starting this new project called the take two project and it's a it's a worship band but you know we we record everything ourselves we, we do it straight from our house or in our uh, small space studio in, in our church and from there, we mix ourselves, we record everything, vocals. Even if we don't have the equipment for it, we still have to get it done. So most of the time, it's about how you push yourself to the next position. Um, like, the endorsements, like I said, help a little bit, but it's not, it's not the factor, mm. you know? So what you have to do is always find a way to inspire yourself, no matter what position you're in. If you even have, like, let's say writer's block, I'm, I'm writing a song and I think something's really cool, but I don't know what fits in like the middle. Well, you have the first part, you have the second part, record that, work on that, you know, put a lot of time and energy into that. And that middle part will usually work itself out. You know, uh, with our church, we wrote a song uh, that's like an upbeat, like very funky song. And we, we were having that problem with, the, with, with, like I said, the middle part, the bridge. And at first we were thinking, okay, should we do a guitar solo here? Should we do like a bass slap thing? Should we do like a spoken word thing? And then it, it just kind of figured itself out. Like the problem resolved itself, but that wouldn't have happened if we didn't work so hard on everything else that we knew we had at the moment. So work with what you have, you know, now that I'm here, I'm working with what I have in order to get to the next step. If, if you can't work well with the things that you have at the moment, then when better things come, how do you know that you're going to be able to manage that, you know? And I think that's really important for everybody to know. So now that I'm here, I'm working with what I have as hard as possible. You know, I, I before we started recording, I, I kind of said that I've been staying up, you know, two, three o'clock in the morning, uh, recording and, 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 and uh, mixing and editing and doing all these things because we want it to sound good. So put 100% into into the small things that you're doing now so that you're able to manage the bigger things later on and i think that's that's what i have to do now you know oh that's good that's real yeah. good um it's really cool how you mentioned like collaborating with others and it's really cool like how like these doors open with you with gibson and and hopefully i hope marshall you know definitely signs you on me um, too <laughs> <laughs> that'd be really awesome um so i'm pretty sure like you've probably met like so many like cool like musicians maybe people who inspired you um possibly um is there any particular artist like you like your dream artist that you are hoping to collaborate with in a project <laughs> or or to play with or something um yeah uh, there's this band that i really hope to, to, you know, work with someday. And uh, Vinny probably already knows the name of the band. <laughs> let, let me um, guess, let me guess. Say it. Is it, is it Reliant K? Yes. <laughs> hey, Reliant. Uh, <laughs> well, they're, they're my favorite, they're my all time favorite band. Uh, I grew up listening to them, you know? Um, and the, the first time I saw them live, it was in the Fort Lauderdale Revolution, which I've also had the honor of playing there. And I remember when I was playing there, I was standing on the stage looking out and I was like, Switchfoot has played here, Reliant K, Calling Me House, Muse, like everybody I look up to has played here, you know? And it just felt like an honor. But the first time I saw them, I, I got there like at eight o'clock in the morning. I, I brought them Cuban pastries, Cuban pastelitos. And I stood <laughs> up, I, I parked right in front of their bus 
So when they started coming out, I would yell out their names. They'd come and say hi, and then I'd give them pastries. And you know, right. back then I didn't have a lot of money, so my sister bought me VIP tickets as a birthday gift. So when I met them at VIP, they recognized me. They knew my name. They went out of their way to like do a little extra for me, and I thought that was cool. But then, you know, I stayed in contact with the guitarist. The guitarist started his, his own uh, pedal company, and I bought one of his pedals, and it, it sounds magnificent. And uh, I went up to Orlando to see their lead singer because he had a, a, a side project too. And when I went to California to, to Winter Nam, I met up with the guitarist and he was like, hey, what's up, Jonathan? And I was like, <gasps> yeah, I was having a heart attack. And we, he started talking about this tour that they're gonna do. And I was like, well, if you need anything, and then I slipped in my business card, like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's, that's like the band that I, I really hope to get to work with, if not, them, you know, there's plenty of other artists that that are that I really help, hope to get to work with too. Um, but yeah, Reliant K is like the prime number one. I'm working, I'm working to try to see if I can get there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a question. Um, a lot of the teams that we work with are learning to play instruments, or um, and they are a lot of them spend a lot of time teaching themselves from sources like YouTube. Um, I was wondering if you have any kind of recommendations of, you know, what's a good way to go about teaching yourself an instrument and at what point, what are some ways that you can help when you're managing yourself and your own progress with music? Um, and at what point, like, may you want to kind of get help? That's a great question. I love that question. So I work also with School of Rock, um, Miami, and a lot of them are, are self-taught, like, like you, uh, like you, you know, like you just said. Um, when it comes to self-teaching, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I actually love that because that means people are taking the initiative to start their own thing themselves. And I know a lot of guitarists that are self-taught and that are way better than me. I don't know why they're not sponsored, you know. But when you're teaching yourself you have to take things slow. And this is something that I, I give, I tell all of my students, no matter you know, which school or whatever, I, I give them all the same story. I'm like, okay, tell me the story of the tortoise and the hare. And then they're kind of like taken back. And then they, you know, they tell me, okay, the tortoise and the hare, you know, they had this race, but the hare got too cocky, fell asleep, but the tortoise you know, kept walking and finished the race and what? And I'm like, okay, slow and steady wins the race. So what I mean by that is, most kids that are self-taught, they, they look at the video and they're like, I want to play exactly like that. And then they try to go full speed ahead and then they start messing up. And that's usually what demotivates them. So if, if anybody that's listening to this or anybody watching, if you're self-taught, take it slow, take it slow, take it piece by piece. Every little, think of it as a puzzle. You got to figure out what piece connects to the next one and then do it slow. Practice those exercises slow, play those chords extremely slow. Use a metronome. Metronomes are incredibly important. You got to keep time and learn how to feel the music. So I, I usually when I talk about this, a lot of my students look at me like I'm a weird like hippie because I'm like, no, man, you know, move your head, put your body into it, feel the music. And they're like, uh. <laughs> and I'm like, no, like tap your foot, move your head, do whatever you need to do. Usually whenever a student of mine sees me play live now, or like anybody that knows me, sees me play night now, they think I'm crazy. Like I, I get so into it. And uh, I, one of my friend's moms came out to see me because I was playing at the fair a couple of years ago. And she was like, you like, you turn into a completely different person. This is because I learned how to feel the music. So all of those things, take it slow, practice with the metronome and learn how to feel the music. And trust me, if even if you're self-taught or, or with a teacher, those three things are gonna take you to the next level. Now, the point where you should reach and look, you know, look for help is the moment that you can recognize, I can't do this by myself. I need somebody to explain it to me. So most of the time for uh, somebody that's self-taught, it's if they want to learn how to solo, they want to learn how to improvise, or they want to learn songwriting. Those three are kind of like the, or you know, soloing and improvising are kind of like a, a similar thing. But you need most of the time you'll need a teacher to kind of guide you in the right direction. Like, okay, I want to learn how to solo like 
uh, like Eric Clapton. Okay, these are the records that you need to listen to. This is the exact thing that you need to copy. These are the skills that you need to learn. Now grab all of those things and try to create your own thing from that. You know, um, I hope that answered the question. That was great. That was really good advice. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. I could I definitely personally could relate to that because I don't know if you can see I have a guitar <laughs> behind <laughs> me. So I, I, I have self-taught myself. Um, so I have like taught like a couple of teens. I'm not great. I'm not as great as you, but I could like play chords and stuff like that. So yeah, I could definitely like um, back you up. Like, yeah, take your time because kids like the teens will see me play and they're like, oh my God, you know, can you teach me? And they think like, it's like an overnight like thing, yeah. you know? And it's mm -hmm. like, dude, like take your time, you know? Um, for me personally, um, what helped me was like learning songs like I like. So researching songs that I like, get those tabs and kind of teaching myself and you gotta like be dedicated and practice like every day. Yeah. Like, like yeah. every day or else like learning a language you know you'll you lose it so yeah exactly and most of the, most of the kids that i teach or teenagers they you know i ask them how many times did you practice and they're like i practiced one time but it was like four hours and i'm like that's yeah. that's not really enough you're much more effective and efficient practicing every single day from 20 minutes to half an hour than just yeah. one day you know four hours you know that's cool that's great that you practice that at when i was practicing all like uh, when I when I used to practice a lot, and what I mean by a lot, I mean in time periods, I would practice four to six to eight hours a day. You know, now I don't have the I don't have the time. It's part of my career. I'm playing guitar all the time, but when it comes to practicing, I practice maybe twenty to thirty minutes every day. But it's effective practice. It's focused practice, and I think that's what's really important. You got to take it slow. You got to take your time. You know, use a metronome, learn how to feel the music, and learn the parts. That's yeah. really important. Yeah, I think that like. You know, like you guys said, like we also when we teach the kids, like it's so it's so funny. They they just don't want they just want to get rolling, you know, and like, start, yeah, and, like, going yeah. and doing these things. And we have a couple, you know, that we can you know you know shout out here that like started like that. You know, like I remember we have a teen at our south location. His name is Gio. He you know when he first started learning guitar, it was like you know the basics, you know, just you know um, like finger picking, like you know basic certain you know tabs or like songs and then now he's like learning like actual like like soloing a song or like covering songs um the same for another teen his name is Tyreek I remember like just just showing him the basics and I hardly taught him too much but it's just we we inspired him and he went off to like buy his guitar we see him like when he comes to our space and like brings his guitar he always like plays a song or like he's able to like you know, when he used to come to our space, he was able to like play songs. So we see that it's also like a slow trajectory. It's not, again, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be from overnight. And yeah, and, it's, it, takes, and it, it takes time. And, and each instrument is different too. Like we also have uh, an electronic drum set and kids see like results, you know, much faster than guitar because it sometimes like in that instrument, it's easier to like, okay, let's bring down a beat than rather like play a song. Um, like strumming a song or play a piano so I would say that like it also depends on the instrument too like I remember when I first started playing instrument like um, music I started with piano as well and you know I, I, I grew tired of it because I, to get to like the advanced level it was like it was so it was so far down the line you know it was yeah. like it was going to take a while and and I wanted that immediate like results so that's why I ended up playing drums and you know like <laughs> like, I dropped I dropped all like you know like guitar like piano just to start playing drums but I mean it, again it's it's your interest you know it, it doesn't, it doesn't right. mean that guitar uh, drums is like the only one that's like you'll get results fast you you hit certain like like moments where you get stuck and and this is where my like my question reads up like how have you like you know certain moments of your career like when you reach the like plateau of like learning something new like what have you done to like you know just break that you know that that that, that roof to go on to the next step like i know that oh i can look back and be like dude like i i got better from this because yeah. i implemented that or i i changed my strategy so right right and it's what what i want to kind of uh, touch upon before i answer the question is 
it's really easy to do what you just said, to kind of look back and go, I got better. But then it's hard to go to tell yourself, I need to improve more. Because there's moments, like I was just telling my girlfriend, uh, I think yesterday or two days ago, that if I can go to the past and, you know, bring myself to the future and then, you know, be like, look, this is how we're playing now, this is how we're doing, I feel like I'd be more inspired to practice more, <laughs> you know? But it's, it's really easy to just not, to kind of keep yourself from going by telling yourself I've improved, you know? Um, but it's hard to get out of those areas yeah. to where you're stuck. Um, I had, I just recently got out of that again. You know, I'll, I'll usually reach that point maybe once every four months when I want to improve and I just can't. And it's because, it's usually because we're, we're approaching something wrong where we're looking at the situation from the wrong angle. So for me, it was kind of like the way I was phrasing something I didn't like on, on guitar or my chord progressions just didn't sound right for a specific song that I'm writing. And it's because I was looking at it through one angle. I was looking at it one dimensionally. So what works for me personally is putting down my guitar and not listening to things that relate to the song. And what I do is I listen to something completely different. So for example, uh, the moment that I reached that, that level, I was like, I want to sound more rock and roll. I want to play, I want to play like, like Eric Clapton or BB King, oh, sorry, not BB King, uh, let's say Mark Townsend or, or any of these great rock and roll guitarists. But I, I can't, I, like any, anything I try, just it wouldn't work out. So instead of looking at the rock and roll, I, I followed the history of, of rock and roll. I went all the way down to blues. And I was like, this is where it all came from. It's blues, and then it branched out to jazz and rock, right? Or uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, I forgot. Let's just call it like the beginning of rock and roll, with like Elvis. And then that branched out to like southern rock and then rock and roll. And then it just keeps growing and growing to the rock that we know now. So learning that first, those, those, uh, those like primal uh, uh, moments in, in history. Yeah, the foundation thing. Thank you, Vinny. Uh, learning those foundational moments of rock and roll helped me to, to you know, get better. There was another point when I was writing a lot of like singer songwriter acoustic songs, and I just couldn't find the right sound that I wanted. I'm talking about chords, I'm talking about like the overall color of the song. I, I couldn't find what I wanted. So I had to stop listening to John Mayer, I had to stop listening to like Coldplay, I had to stop listening to all these pop singers. And I went to uh, bluegrass, American bluegrass, like, you know, <laughs> stuff that you usually laugh at. But what I found is that those, those melodies, those harmonies are so original. There's this one band called um, The Arcadian Wild. Beautiful songwriting, beautiful music. And it's just a violin, a mandolin, and, and, uh, and a guitar. But their chord progressions were just so out of the ordinary that that kind of inspired me to to break that you know to break that plane to go to the next level so you have to kind of stop looking at it through one you know one area one dimensionally and kind of go around find something that um maybe doesn't relate to the topic but it really does in more than one way i, I guess you know that helps a lot that's good that's awesome all right so i guess we're gonna ask one more question Go ahead. Um, before we, we close. Um, this is a, an awesome conversation. Like I feel like we could talk all day because <laughs> um, your, your story is so cool. Um, so I guess like, you know, for the sake of the teens and, and everyone here, because, um, you know, like you said, you, your story has had some ups, you've had some downs, um, some plateaus. So for those out there who feel like they want to pursue like a career within the music industry, you know, but, you know, maybe they're getting like a lot of discouragement. Like you said, like for you, your parents kind of were like, yo, like, can you really like make a career out of this? Right, so yeah. what's like one last like advice you could give to like maybe our teens who want to pursue it, but it seems like, you know, their environment around them just is telling them, you know, not to like, what would you say? If you're going to do it, do it well. Uh, one of, 
this is a bad example to an extent, and I hope everybody kind of understands. Um, one time I went to Colorado to, to be with my cousins, and we're all like 18, 19, and you know, we're still living with our parents, so we respect everything that they, they tell us to do, right? So, but we knew that they didn't want us to get tattoos. So I was like, hey, you should all get a tattoo, but we should get it somewhere where we can hide it or something like that. And then one of my cousins was like, I'm gonna get one right here. And I'm like, no, we're not big anymore. <laughs> so his reasoning behind it was go big or go home. And that's the same kind of advice in music or any field that, that anybody wants to, to go in, go bigger or just don't do it at all. I've dedicated my life to music. I, there's moments when I'm walking down to the grocery store and I listen to something and I know the chord progression, even though I've never heard the song before, I can recognize it. It's because I've studied and I've given every last piece of my blood, my sweat to music. I've worked so hard and I continue to work hard. The, the, the point is, to work at it like you've never worked at something before. You need to find something that you like and then run with it. Run like crazy. See, it's the reason why so many opportunities have opened up to me is not because I'm good. It's not because I've, I'm better than anybody else because the night that I got sponsored by Gibson, there was everybody else I felt was, was 10 times better than me. Their solos were cleaner. Their, 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 their chords were much more know um like uh, they were, were harder to play they were, they were wider they, they just sounded beautiful but what separated me from everybody else was the work that i put in i was and to a point daring you know i made sure that whenever the guy would walk by he'd look at me hold the guitar and play it you know and I, it's not that i was faking it because i did love the guitar but i made sure that he was looking at me i made sure that that uh that i got the, the tickets for free to go to, to LA and to go to Winter Nam. I made sure that when I was at Winter Nam, I'm like standing at the Gibson booth and I met the president of Gibson and I made sure he knew who I was and I gave him my business card. I made sure that the people that I want to work with know who I am. You have to be daring and you have to work hard. If not, you know, you won't be able to get anywhere. At a Miami Dade College, uh, I went back recently just to go say hi to a, a couple of professors that are really good friends of mine. And one professor, his name is Professor Quincy. He's a, a very, very dedicated, hardworking guy. He's, uh, he's worked on even setting up sound system for the AAA. You know, he's one person that you should look up to. And he was telling me that nobody at Miami Dade now wants to work. You know, they're, they were asking for volunteers to, to do sound for, uh, for a dance event. And everyone was like, but am I going to get paid? No, you're going to get better. <laughs> and that's how you get better. You do things that are inconvenient, that are an inconvenience to you, but you know that are going to give you the experience to get better, you know? So work hard, go, go hard or go home. That's, that's the best, um, that's the best that I can give. That's the best, um, yeah, that I can, that I can say. <laughs> that's as much as I can say. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Like, you think about it, you know, it's, you're, you're working, you know, like you should always work for, for some sort of income, right? No matter what mm -hmm. job, you know, you don't want to just, like, right. just work and not get paid. But in areas like, in, like in music or anywhere creatively, like let's say film or design or like fashion, a lot of times you really have to like fall under, you know, this, this, you know, the season where you work without getting paid, you know? or you, you, you sort of like get this experience, but just like, even if it's stuff that's not in your, you know, sort of field, but it's, again, it's, it's time that is better spent, you know, doing this than absolutely nothing, you know? Yeah. So if it's a film project that you're, you're working on and you're not getting paid, but you're there to see, or it's a, you know, a huge gig at some sort of like, you know, little park or a mall, but you know, they're getting random artists from around the city and you're there just to be like the sound assistant or like some sort of engineer like to help out but you're not getting paid like that goes you know that goes in the long run again like that that goes under your belt in the sense of like oh i got the experience and understanding of this so that the times where you eventually get to where you get paid you know it's not like oh it's my first rodeo or you know yeah school is happy school is going to help you so much, you know, with the instruction mm -hmm. and the, like the, the theory and like all these things, but you also got to have, 
kind of get your hands dirty and this sort of stuff. So that, mm -hmm. that advice is so true. Like you, you really have to like, you know, really go in it and invest you know as much as you can like dive deep into this this field and, or whatever it is that is and not look back and like oh, i don't know you know whether it's music you know and, and photo or like film like again like these are the things that we try to reiterate until we tell our um our teams in our space um and we have like one more thing before we wrap up we kind of have like this speed round that we do um with every guest it's sort of it's sort of cool because we you, you have like 10 seconds five to ten seconds to answer these questions some of them are related to music some of them aren't but we just oh, it's to, boy. It's to where, where you're at um and then we can we can call it a day all right so ready <laughs> all, right, all right let's go all right so what has i'm getting like a lot of interference here come on <laughs> Oh, oh, you're like here. recording something here. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, what has been your go-to snack in this um, quarantine right now? Go. Oh, um, nerds, nerds. I love nerds. Nerds, cool. Nerds. Yeah. Wow. All That's right. That's the first. <laughs> that is the first. We haven't heard nerds. I've never heard that. Nerd, no, no nerds. <laughs> All everyone, everyone says like I. We heard a lot of like like it? cookies or, Cookie or candy. Was it? Um, yeah, cheese it. Cheez Its. Cheez Its have been like the most popular and like. You know, I, I actually have two and they don't, they're not related. It's either Nerds or Takis. Like. Oh, uh, Takis. Oh, I Takis. love Takis. Actually, no, I don't have some in my bag. I ate them before coming today. But. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of those two. All right. Pick your point. Um, <laughs> number two, what has been like your go to like TV show or movie? Oh, uh, right now during the quarantine, I'm watching Brooklyn Nine Nine. I think that show is mm. hilarious. But if it's not that, it's The Office. Nice. Oh, nice. The Office yeah. is good. All right, number number three. Who is your biggest inspiration for music? That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta I have one. So many. One. One. Mm, all right. I, uh, all right. Uh, I'm just going to say Matthew Hoops. He's the guitarist of Relax K, Matthew Hoops. Okay. I'm going to stick with that. Okay. If you were to open a show for any artist, who would it be? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> say it for me. Say it for me. Relax K. Relax <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I thought I thought with the whole like collaborating with like the band, I was like, okay, maybe he'll hear it. We already got that. Maybe another artist he wants to open up for. Yeah, I can say another artist. Easy. All right, who else? All right, Switch. who else? Switch. Switch foot. Okay. Yeah. All right, we got like one more. I think this is like the most important. What are name three qualities that make a good guitarist? Go. Okay, play the song. <laughs> Three words. So what I mean by that, what I mean by that is okay. guitarists will usually try to, to make themselves look like the star. You know, they, they will try to like solo in a section where it's not supposed to. They're trying to turn on the distortion in a place where it's not supposed to be. No, play your song, play the song, play the section that you're supposed to play. And then when it's your time to shine, go ham. You know, that's your time to shine. And then after that, play your part again. That's so, so true, man. <laughs> I, and, and when I was uh, the president of the, uh, the Vocal Fusion Club at Miami Data, I used to tell everybody that I was like a dog that hated dogs. I used to hate working with guitars because I'd be like, okay, this is the song that says Sunday Morning by Moon 5. The guitarist does not have a solo, but then I have this guy going <laughs> through the whole song. I'm like, dude, it's, wow. it's jazzy. Let, let the song breathe, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, so play the song. That's awesome. <laughs> beautiful all right well that sort of you know about does it i mean it's pretty sad that we didn't get any teens but we'll still send this out to them they'll still be able to see this we want to thank you again jonathan for jumping up on this zoom call um you know on, on behalf of everyone we, we thank you for you know taking time to just answer some questions give us like great you know feedback and advice um i think this is really going to help a lot of the the teens of our in our space, especially those that are you know in this sort of field and interested in doing this, um, 
we we you know we wish you well in you know your future and your endorsement with Gibson and your future endorsements and any sort of gigs. Um, but yeah, man, we appreciate you coming out. Um, I don't know if anyone else has anything else to share before we wrap it up. Yes, we do. Um, just a reminder for teens who may be watching this. Um, next Monday will be our next podcast again. Um, it will be our we're continuing with the game show edition. Um, I attended this Monday and it was lit. Like if you missed it, you definitely want to come through this Monday. Um, we play like a variety of different games, whether it's like charades or um, just party games, like pool party games. Um, we're trying to incorporate in it. So definitely come through Monday. It'll be at four o'clock. So be there. Awesome. Thanks again, Jonathan. No problem. I loved it. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was inspiring. We, we need to do this again. For sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Whenever you guys want, just let me know. Part two. Coming yeah. Through. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hopefully in person this time. <laughs> yeah, 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 that'll be fun. <laughs> By the way, if it is ever in person, me and Vinny will play for everybody. He's, oh. I think he's a better drummer than I am a guitarist. Ooh. Oh my God! Let's that's so, go. That's so awesome. Thank you. <laughs> that would be epic. <laughs> yeah. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> All right, everyone, wave All right. off. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Later, guys.